Hello everyone, Coach Carol back again with more tips and hints for your journey into ancestry in 2024. And this one is for January the 9th. And the focus for this is to build a series of themes for your ancestral stories. And one of the best ways to do that is to join the 52 Ancestors 52 Weeks program generated by Amy Johnson Crow. I'll take you over there and you can have a look in just a moment, but I'll explain what it is first of all. This particular challenge encourages us to research and share stories of 52 ancestors across the year. And this provides us with a way to delve deeper into our family tree and uncover fascinating tales from the past. So getting started, you choose an ancestor to research each week. Don't worry if you can't do that every week, every fortnight, once a month or whenever you can is okay as well. So you start with what you know and work backwards in time. And you can utilize various genealogical resources like census, birth and death certificates to help you gather the information and uncover the tale. Don't forget to organize your findings and create a family tree to visualize your progress. That's always a good way to get started. Then for the storytelling itself, you should make these stories engaging. Don't try and cover everything in one go. Who has time to listen to the life story of one of your ancestors? Pick a period of time in the life of that ancestor and write about that. This becomes your story arc and you can use all kinds of things to hook the reader in change your style and structure, or even create cliffhangers to captivate your audience. Various storytelling techniques that you might want to incorporate. You should also consider using AI to help you with that story. If you're looking, for example, on analyzing some of the data about that ancestor you've chosen, AI can be your friend. They can help you transcribe old documents, for example. And this might help pick up on missing information. The whole, the whole idea about choosing a theme, in this case, the 52 ancestors, 52 weeks, is to share. You can do that through various mediums, such as blogs, in your book, or on social media. And you can also engage with the community itself to exchange ideas and insights. Amy Johnson Crow's Generation Cafe in Facebook is the community where you would go to if you join the program. Include your historical context. Once again, AI can help you delve deeper into the historical data to focus on the time period and the geographic location of your chosen ancestor. You can explore historical records through local newspapers and archives, and you might use any one of the online databases to do that. Join the community. So connect with those fellow genealogists who are doing the same challenge. So let's have a look at how you can get involved with 52 weeks. Sharing my screen with you now. So if you go to amyjohnsoncrow.com slash 52 ancestors 52 weeks, you'll find this engaging post that you can read to understand more about how you can theme your stories using her prompts. And there is a link there to join the 52 ancestors in 52 weeks challenge. And then you'll be given a list of prompts for throughout the season.
I'm currently looking at the list of themes for 2024, and you'll get these if you join the program. It's completely free, and you'll receive a weekly email with the ideas and how to use the prompts, and you can sign up from this page as well. So in January, the theme of the first week was family law, second week origins, third week favourite photo, fourth week witness to history. So all of those can prompt you in writing your stories. So I've actually chosen this one about origins so that I can focus in on one of my ancestors to write up my story. And I'm going to do that in my We Are program. I've spoken to you about weare.xyz before, but if you are new to it, just point your browser to weare.xyz and you'll find out more about this intriguing Family History Archive program. I'm currently writing the draft for a story about my great-grandmother. And the theme that I've chosen is about her resilience and her motherhood in late 19th century England and the fact that she was a, an older mother. She married in her when she was 32 and then had six children between 1886 to 1896, as you can see here. She had six sons. So I find that this is an intriguing story and I wanted to commemorate that for, for her and to put photos of her six sons together with this part of the story. I only ever had the one photo of the six sons and each of those little thumbnails, they're a bit blurred, but you'll see each of them alongside this particular part of the document. In creating this document, I can add other parts to her story. Scrolling down here now to the, the final part, which is their final years. And what I like about being able to see some ideas is the little template behind the content block. This comes with the program. It suggests a photo that you might put in place and it's also suggesting the type of things that you might add, such as the text that you saw there. I can put in place anything I like in that segment to talk about her demise. Let me scroll back up to the beginning of this document and you'll see everything else that's in place for her. There's another theme to her story where I'm looking at the the pulse of London in the, 19, in the 1880s and some photos of her family. I don't have a lot of information, in fact, none about her education and early adulthood. So that particular piece of the theme will have to wait for another time. It gives you a space where you can put in documents. So I do have her birth certificate, as you can see here, born on the 17th of December, 1852, on the 7th of June. And this is in the sub-district of Christchurch in the county of Surrey. And of course, from this document, I can see that her father was Thomas Julius Pampey Blackburn. He was a whitesmith. Her mother was Eliza Blackburn. And the birth of the child was registered on the 25th of January, 1853. A little bit slow, <laughs> never mind. Well, at least it was registered and I could find it there to verify her date of birth. Not a lot is known about her early years, so that's another segment ready for me to fill in. But once again, you get hints on the left-hand side. It'll be a bit faint for you to read, but gives you questions like when, where, and to whom were they born? Any childhood memories or records? Describe where they lived. Did they move? And that will be another theme for me because they moved houses frequently, especially when she was married to my great-grandfather. And at the beginning, we've got places to put in 
photos of the ancestor. I don't have her as a teenager or as an older person. I just have these two. But you can see where it's heading. And right at the very top, we have the profile, which introduces her. Now, all of that becomes a document that I can publish and I can share with others. So I'm going to put a link to that particular story at the bottom of this video for you so you can go back later and see what I have done to it since viewing today. And I can continue to edit depending on what I have found. Notice too that it has an AI biography creator involved in writing the article. A brilliant way to get started, gives you further ideas. So themes galore in this particular video that I'm sharing with you today. And remember, if you want to get involved with 52 ancestors in 52 weeks, go on over to the website and learn about the whole program. And if you want to get involved with We Are, certainly go and have a look for weare.xyz. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look into themes. I'll be back with more videos for January, but I hope you're getting started in, in your planning for your genealogy for 2024.